Hi guys and welcome back to World of Tanks with El Niachi. Today we're going to have a look at the tier 6 Russian heavy tank, one of the two, the KV-85, the other one being the T-150. This is the, well officially this is the faster and less well armoured tank of the two. Um, it replaced the old KV-1S which then moved down to tier 5. So tier 6 we've got this here, and it's, well, it's, it's a really good tier 6 tank to be fair. It's got 870 hit points, which is comparable. I mean, KV2's got 860. Tier 6 heavies I've got. Well, not many actually. Um, okay, that's premium, but PS4S medium only has 430. Ugh, I appear to be rather short on tier 6s at the moment. Of 430, 730. Um, yeah, the Cromwell 750. So it's it's quite a bit more than any other mediums. Unfortunately, I appear to have a distinct lack of heavy tanks to check against. But yeah, it's it compares quite favourably. It with the setup I've got has a weight weight of 46.2 tons, an engine power of 600. Which, uh, let's see, I'm not quite sure what power to weight ratio that gives it. Um, let's see, statistics. No, not statistics. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. What do you expect? Vehicle details. There we go. Okay, it doesn't tell me. Um, a little under 15 horsepower per ton. It's got top speed of 34 kilometers an hour, which isn't massively fast, but isn't slow slow. Traverse speed of 30 degrees per second, which is reasonably good for a heavy tank. The hull armor is 75 at the front, which isn't too bad. 60 at the side, 60 at the rear, which if you look, KV-1 is actually less well armored than the KV-1 at here below. The turret is 100 millimeters at the front, 90 at the side and 90 at the rear, which again, that's not as good as the KV-1, but the KV-1 is a very well armoured tank. Now the guns, you've got a choice of three. You start off with the 85mm D5T, which is not a bad gun. 120mm penetration, though it's starting to get a little bit lacklustre here at tier 6 when you can fight tier 8. So you've got a choice of two tier 7 guns here. You've got the 100mm S34, which is what I've got equipped there, which has a rate of fire of almost 8 rounds a minute. With my setup, with crew trained how they are in the gun rammer, that's a reload time of just over 6 seconds, so you can get it close to 10 rounds a minute. It has an average damage of 250, or 330 with high explosive, but with this gun, you're never going to be firing high explosive, really. Then the other option you have is here, the 122mm D25T, which is the same gun you used to get on the KV-1S, but this gun was modified when they brought up the KV-85. So it's, it's got an on-paper rate of fire of 3, 3 to 4.17. Um, 175mm penetration, that's 5mm better than the S34. Much higher alpha damage, 390 compared to 250. But, if you look there, it's got uh, 0.5 accuracy and 3.6, sorry about that, 3.6 second aiming time, which is pretty atrocious. But it is it's very much a close range, roll round the corner, derp them in the face, then get out there while you reload. So I prefer the 100mm gun. Just because it's... Well, have a look. 0.38 accuracy, which is a lot better. 2.7 second aiming time, reasonable, reasonable better. It only loses 5mm of penetration, but you get a massive increase in damage per minute. Now turret traverse speed, with the top turret is 28 degrees with a view range of 340 
And the signal range, not very impressive of 440 meters, but it's your standard mid-tier crappy Russian radio. Anyway, that's just a quick rundown in the garage. So, does it tell me there? Ability. Oh, specific power. Oh boy, was I way off. 13 horsepower per ton, not 15. <sighs> Didn't realise it told me there. Never mind. So, that's the tank. Quick rundown on crew skills. Now, usually you would go for 6 cents first on your commander. Uh, I went for recon just to increase the amount of view range, then 6 cents. And now I'm working on situational awareness, which extends the view range as well because your commander is also your radio operator. For the gunner, I went for snapshot and then armor because you do seem to get the gun damage quite a bit, so improving the accuracy of it is always useful. After that, well, anything really, maybe repairs. For the driver, I went for off-road driving, just make it perform better on rough terrain. Clutch braking, just bring that traverse speed up a little bit more. And then smooth rides, what train next. Then once I've finished that, um, I'm probably going to stick repairs on there or firefighting. And then the loader, oh, generally, so just, just stick repairs on him. Unless you're going to work on getting brothers in arms, stick repairs on him. Because loader skills suck. So that's the quick rundown of the tank. Let's have a look and see how it performs in combat. So here we are on Swamp in a tier 7 match. Oh look, it's one of those new ISU-122S's. First time I've seen one of those. New premium tank, uh, the fourth tank to follow on after the Berlin Trio. Let's go! So, we're going to head over to the left here on the bridge with the IS. Big brother. Tank guys, anyway. Um, let's see if we can put this gun to use. The only disadvantage this tank has is it has very, very bad gun depression. Look at that. Something like 3 degrees of gun depression, which is absolutely useless at times. If you get, if you get tracked with your hull slightly up in the air, you're screwed. Unless you've got a repair kit and you can get out of there. If they can keep you tracked, you will not be able to do a thing about it. Because you you just can't really you don't have to point at him. A match earlier today where I got tracked by a Pan PIS 4H with the 105 gun. I just couldn't couldn't get away. Couldn't repair my tracks quick enough to get out of there. Just kept blowing it off and then he switched to high explosive anti-tank ammo and just blew me away. See, even though this isn't a quick tank, it is as quick as the IS. The IS is considered quite a fast heavy in tier 7. Or if not, this will be fast, quite maneuverable anyway. Let's see if we can... Oh, no, I can't get the gun down. I just cannot bring the gun down far enough to shoot some of those guys. Yeah. Bridge there, not a chance. I got spotted coming over here, but nothing about our game. Enemy is hit! There's a nasty auto loader there. Let's give me the shot into that cheery. Enemy armor is hit! Okay. Been spotted this time again. Pull back. Where'd the IS go? Down. Went to hide behind me. That's, that's nice of you, mate. There's two tanks up here, which was me to go first. Well, the KV2 missed, that's always a good start. So, oh, Jackson's gone. Okay, so KV2 and the 360 are both tier 6 heavies. Oh, and I've got stuck with them. Enemy armor is damaged. Oh, I don't know what he's doing. Tier 7 heavy hype. Oh, shhh. That's not good, that's not good, that's not good. Enemy vehicle destroyed. One of our tracks is damaged. 
retracts a most of that shot from the KP2. And, uh, Ready to fire. Oh dear, I am dead. Oh, um, this vehicle is heading. Most of that IS to actually bother to come and help me, wasn't it? But, yeah. That was an absolutely awful game. You can still see in a very short space of time, I managed to do nearly a thousand damage because of the rate of fire of that thing. Okay, my armor didn't hold up very well, but I'm only a tier 6 heavy. It's not going to hold up overly well most of the time. And of course, here the IS is probably going to start complaining about something. So. No, I'm not going to say anything because maybe I should have hung back. I don't know. Should have probably dealt with that Chiri before moving up. Yeah. That's a quick look at me derping around in the KV-85 with a 100mm gun anyway. Now let's have a look at somebody who actually knows what they're doing, shall we? Yeah. Let's do that. Okay, so here we are on the Siegfried Line encounter battle with noob number one in his KV-85. It's a tier 7 match again. ISU-122S again. So suddenly seeing quite a lot of those. So here he's got the 100mm gun. He's also got uh, binocular telescopes, which isn't something I'd fit to the KV-85, but each to their own. And now, this replay really isn't about the number of kills he gets, because I don't think he actually gets any kills. It's just about the sheer damage. The amount of damage you can pump out with this 100mm gun. So what we're going to do is going to watch the match from his perspective. He's coming up here. 580 meters. It was a long shot hitting that. He, he didn't leave it to aim that well, but he's got another target there. Let it aim in. Nearly 500 meters and just go straight in. That's his first hit. He disappeared when he took that shot, so I don't know whether or not it went in. But at the moment, it's really not looking good for the team. Well, I'll say not looking good. It's, it's 1 2, but you know how these matches go to start with. I, I, I can't tell whether or not he damaged the KV-1S again. Because um, someone else was shooting at it as well. Yeah, he seems not quite sure what to do here. But besides, you know, fuck it. I'm going to go around. I'm going to be the heavy. I'm going to try to take a shot at the Chinu Kai, but again, he, he snapped the shot off a bit. And, wasn't likely to go in. There we go. Good hit there. Rather low damage roll. It's another gun that you notice a lot of the time you seem to get way below average damage rolls. The average damage of this gun is 250 a shot. And that was 210. Comes back. Oh, IS. Just shot to the side of the IS. It takes that quarter of his health off. And then I just put a second one in before the IS even manages to pull back. So, 950 damage so far. Looking for another target. There we go. 1200 damage. From five shots. 1400. This, this is the sort of situation where you can really put this gun to work. Where you can fire just about every time the gun reloads is the perfect position for you to be putting this tank. With the 100mm gun. He's hoping to get a shot at the T43 there before it can be And he takes some damage, but. I just put a second shot in and the IS finishes him off and blows him away. Now it's looking pretty good for his team here. Oh, an engine shot from the Chino Kai, so he quickly uses his repair kit there. But it's 8-6, it's, it's not looking too bad. Cheat over. 
sets him on fire and looks like an automatic fire extinguisher. If not, he's got the fastest fingers in the world. Oh, and now he's lost his driver as well. With this tank, it does rely to some extent on its mobility, so I find you always need to have a repair kit and a med kit. Now that shot, by the look of it, bounced off his turret there. And the second one, the tracks ate it, and then another one went in his front plate there. It's really not overly well armoured, and the Cheeto and, Cheeto and Chinukai do have quite good guns at tier 5. Certainly more than adequate for punching through the front of a KV-85 anyway. So he's, he's a bit cautious now because he's, only, he's got less than 300 health left, but he's done 2,600 damage so far and looks like he's finally got some support against these guys. Oh, side of a T-150, slams a shot in and smacks it into reverse. Just put another one in while the T1 is still pointing his gun at him. He just fired and while he was still reloading, he managed to get another shot in. He's playing very cautious because that T150 could potentially finish him off in a single shot. And he does. But the T150's now got massive problems of his own. It's 14 8. And the last remaining guy has announced to everyone where he was most recently, which was sat in the cap, and there he is. He's really not going to last very long, just pull the camera right back there. Everybody's ploughing after this T-3485. He's, he's really not going to last very long at all. Oh, he took the Dicamax with him, but that's all he's going to do. So, 15-9... And as far as I can tell, he did 3,100 damage there. But we'll now have a quick look at his results. So here we are. That was a victory for him, as you saw. Ace tanker. Confederate, because he damaged, well, as you can see, he damaged over half the enemy team there. Didn't get any kills. And high caliber. Let's have a look, shall we? Where is he? Oh, looks like he did do some damage. Did get a second shot on that KV-1S, I think. Yes, he, he hit the KV-1S a second time when he fired blind, but look at that. 19 shots fired, 17 hit, 14 penetrated, 3,347 damage. Armour didn't hold up much, didn't get much resistance damage, but that... Was a 1200 exper base experience win for him. It was his first win of the day, and there's a three times event on, so he came out with five and a half thousand experience and nearly 50,000 credits for the premium account. That would have been nearly 30,000 credits with a standard account. So, yeah, that was noob number one, really showing you what this tank can do if you can just put that gun to use and keep it working. Well that's all for this quick tank review. I hope to catch you again soon. Please give the video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more content coming soon. Thank you.